Claire Trevor School of the Arts is UC Irvine's creative laboratory. From the most traditional of art forms to the radically new, we explore and develop the arts as the essence of human experience and expression. We're poised right now at a pivotal moment as Trevor School is just emerging in its newest form. We have a brilliant future. And we're just getting started. Well, coming up soon at the Barclay Theater is going to be a wonderful production put on by UCI. It's called Parade, and we're fortunate today to have well, one of the people you have met several times before. We have Gary Busby, and you are the chair of uh, the Department of Drama with the Claire Travel School of the Arts, but you are also... Uh, you're the musical director, am I right? I'm the music director, Of yeah. this particular production. Yeah, Good, to see, again, Good to see you again, as always. Good to see you again, Thanks for having and us. And we have the lead actor. We have Jacob Ben Samuel. Shmuel. Shmuel. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> now, first I want to ask about this production because I had not heard of it before. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of people haven't. And I read a bit about it, uh -huh. and it's, it's a really unique production. Uh -huh. It's going to touch on a lot of different things, am I right? A oh, lot absolutely. of different things that are even pertinent right now. Well, the whole season that we've developed is about kind of things that are going on right now. But this play sort of sits at the, the crux of a lot of social issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Jew-Gentile, black-white, rich-poor, yeah. industrial versus agriculture. And, it's all, and it takes place in, a, in, a, in Atlanta in 1913. Oh, okay. And so it's a historical piece, and it's it's actually all the the story is true. It's not fabricated. Mm -hmm. It's based on true events. Leo Frank, who Jacob plays, was a real person. Um, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who uh, the basically the Jewish Anti Defamation League started after this case, and uh, one of the exciting things that's been going on is the. A number of our, our law classes at school teach this course. There's a class called the Miscarriages of Justice. Mm -hmm. And this, this particular case is taught as one of the case studies that the play is about. Interesting. Yeah, so it's got a lot of teeth. That's, that's a, so you, you work with uh, Irwin? Uh -huh, yeah. Over that. <laughs> Not right. directly, but absolutely, yeah, yeah with some good. of his faculty. Yeah. So, Jacob, tell me about your background and how long have you been over at UCI? And this, uh, how'd you come about being the lead actor in this? Sure. Uh, I'm a senior now, so I'm, a, I'm in my fourth year uh, of my undergrad. I'm getting a BFA in musical theater. Uh, and I've been doing theater for basically as long as I can remember. My mom worked in it all through the time I was growing up, so I've kind of just always done it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually had auditions for the two leads of this show back in spring so that they could start working on uh, costumes over the summer. Wow. And so that we could uh, kind of get a handle on this script because it is, like Gary was saying, it is complicated. It is, uh, it's a difficult piece, but it's absolutely gorgeous, so we wanted to be able to do the absolute best that we could uh, working on it. So I've been working since wow, that's basically amazing. all over the summer uh, for the show. So yeah. being that you are a senior, mm -hmm. where are you looking to go in, in a few months? Uh, probably New York. That's, ah. the, that's the goal, yeah. uh, is to move out there and to start working. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a tough business, but you yeah. get out there and you you put yourself out there and you audition and you just kind of see what happens. So yeah, but you, yeah. you know, being the fact that you've been over at UCI, you're getting a background not only on stage but I'm sure off stage as well, right behind the scenes. So you're you're getting that complete education. Right, exactly. Well, there's a great course at UCI called the Business of Show Business. I'm going to be taking that next quarter, and ah. that's all about how to get yourself out there, because you can learn the skills, you can learn the acting, the singing, the dancing, all of that, but that's going to get you nowhere if you don't know how to market yourself. Exactly. So that's a big part of it too, and the great thing about UCI is that uh, there are courses that teach you that, and there's also ample opportunity to put up your own work, uh, oh, which that's is fantastic. another fantastic thing, exactly, because that's something you gotta know how to do in the real yeah. world. Gary, tell me about the music in this. Oh, it's a great is it, Are there songs that may have I've heard, or? Well, 
you, again, uh, to me, this is new. I haven't heard of this yeah. production, and yet, it's it's uh, it's won some awards. Yeah, I right? mean, it, out of the shoot, it was one of those. Um, it was 1999, and it it swept the Tony Awards. You know, the best musical, mm -hmm. best score, all those kinds of things. Um, it's got gorgeous music. I mean, really. Uh, it, Jason Robert Brown sort of is a, is is kind of I think of him as the modern day George Gershwin, mm -hmm. in that he's able or Leonard Bernstein he's able to synthesize um, American popular music and classical idioms and sort of blend them together, mm -hmm. and so the the score has these soaring melodies and big orchestrations and you know beautiful s songs, but it feels very contemporary at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's it's what we call pastiche, and that there's a number of songs that are sort of to set us in the time and place. Okay. There, you know, uh, there's a, rag, a lot of ragtime music and that kind of stuff. So it feels very familiar, and it feels very much like music that we all know as part of our culture, and yet at the same time it's. Ex Exquisitely modern, you know. And, yeah. But not in the, in the sense of like being difficult. Modern in the sense that you can feel the sensibility of a contemporary composer. Right. Yeah. Jacob, tell me about the character, about where the character starts out yeah. and uh, wh where your character kind of ends up, and as far as the, just kind of a little synopsis of their story. Uh, so I play a man named Leo Frank who. Uh, as we said earlier, was a real was a real person. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born in Texas, but then very quickly moved to Brooklyn, New York, where he grew up. Uh, so he is not a man of the South. Okay. Uh, and then he moves to Atlanta uh, to get a job and uh, marries a woman named Lucille. Uh, and when when the story starts, we find him unhappy, uh, not. He's not, he's not in love with the South. He, mm -hmm. he doesn't like to be there. Uh, he misses home, he misses Brooklyn. Uh, he, he really kind of looked down, looks down on a lot of the people, uh, on most of the people that he has to interact with all of the time. Interesting. And, and what, that, uh, what that kind of does is it already sets the community against him because he is this outsider. He is this man from the North who comes down and uh, runs the pencil factory that a lot of the 10-year-old girls work at. So it's already kind of seen, he's already seen as an outsider and as someone who's kind of taking, uh, taking their, uh, their, what am I, uh, their traditions away. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, when uh, one of the little girls who works in the factory is uh, found dead in the basement, he is immediately one of the prime suspects for the case. Wow. Regardless of whether he actually did it, there is this huge, uh, there's this huge, um, uh, of, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but, but everybody's against him just immediately. So it. It almost sounds like, it's from the story that you're giving me, that you're seeing this character from two different sides, almost two different prejudices in the way, yes. his own and then How they, the community, and exactly. did one affect the other? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah, one of the things is uh, he is he sort of paints a target on his own back mm -hmm. yeah. by being so insulating himself and yeah, right. distancing himself from his community rather than integrating with. Um, and he has absolutely no purchase at all with any of the people around him. And so consequently, he, he's an easy target because he's someone that the community can gather around mm -hmm. and, and decide. And the other piece of this is, is you, you're talking about, it, it sort of takes place, you see the, how the role of politics and media very contemporary. Um, you have a politician who, a governor who is really concerned about his standing and mm -hmm. sort of orders the district attorney to make sure he gets a conviction mm -hmm. and right. essentially gives him carte blanche. The district attorney sets, finds a newspaper person down on his luck who sort of works to uh, try the court in the papers. Mm -hmm. Right. Sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, so essentially, it's a kangaroo court before ever it began. Nobody yeah. really knows 
you know, if Leo Frank did or did not, you know, commit the murder. But we do know that the testimonies were um, co-opted yeah. and coerced. And so there's a whole courtroom scene that is probably the last third of the first act mm -hmm. where all of these witnesses are brought. And when is the last time you saw a courtroom scene in a musical? Yeah. It, right? Uh, you know, if you had just told me this and I didn't read anything about it, I would never have guessed this was a musical. Yeah, right. So that's got to be very interesting in itself. Well, well yeah. they even told this. The, people have said to Jason R. Brown, when you know, what the hell have you done? He goes, it's not a musical. And then they see it and they said, it's a musical. Yeah, because yeah. the well, and the uh, the book is by Alfred Dury, who wrote Driving uh, Miss Daisy. Driving Miss oh, Daisy. So really? it's an incredible book as well. Which a lot of the time in musicals, you don't get that. You don't get a book that is. Uh, that That's supports true. the story in the way that the music does. And you were talking about the two different uh, images, the visions of Leo Frank. There's a great number in the courtroom uh, after we've seen a lot of these factory girls, their coerced uh, uh, testimonies about mm -hmm. him. Then we see him perform this number from their point of view. So he turns into this, he monster. turns into this wow. monster that they all see him as in the middle of the courtroom. And then it cuts back to the end of that testimony, and he's like, Th these people have clearly been coached right. on the things that they're saying. So if, as for the audience watching, I'm sure there are times that you loathe the character, and then you're feeling for the character. Right. Yeah. Well, luckily for him, he has a... As his spouse never gives up hope on him. Yeah. And they have a difficult relationship. She's a southern girl. I mean, he has a great line. Jacob delivers so well. You know, I, f I cannot figure out how God made you people Jewish and southern at the same time. Because <laughs> <laughs> he holds southerners in such disdain. Yeah. Right. But, but she doesn't give up on him. And she goes and actually gets all the way to the governor and convinces the governor to reopen the case and look at, at the testimony and look at how things were done. And so that's how he has his sentence commuted at the end of the story. Interesting. Yeah. And I can see how this kind of jives with uh, uh, the author's other book, Driving Miss Daisy. Of course, exactly. she was Jewish. Yes, right? mm -hmm. exactly. All right. I want to tell you about how you can get tickets here. Very easy. Uh, the website is www.arts.uci.edu and then uh, slash tickets if you want to do them that way. Uh, the box office number is 949-824-2787. It begins on November 12th. It goes runs to the 20th. There's eight performances. It's at the Barclay Theater, which is uh, right there on campus. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Always Thanks good for to see us. you. Thanks. Nice to meet you, good sir. To Hope meet to you. see you. Good luck if I don't see you again out Thank there in New York. Much and uh, great performance to the both of you. Thank you. Take care. All right, we'll be right back. Yeah, my...